We're continuing this great conversation with Craig Smith, a former presidential speech writer and author of his recently published book, Confessions of a Presidential Speech Writer. Craig, you've said that the art of writing, at least for you, is rewriting. Yes. Would you explain? Well, I think the first time you rewrite a draft, you take out the big mistakes. And that reveals a whole bunch of little mistakes. And you take those out, and you see even smaller mistakes. Uh, in the modern era, it's hard to get more than four or five drafts done for a president because of the, the news cycle so fast. Uh, they had a luxury, as I mentioned, with Franklin Roosevelt, where they could do more drafts. But the more you rewrite, the better the speech mm -hmm. gets. And the more times the president rehearses delivery, the better it is. Yeah, and you can imagine how hard it is to find time in a president's sure. schedule for that. Well, each of the people you've worked with, as with all human beings, have strengths and weaknesses, and you have to adopt uh, your, your work to those strengths and weaknesses. I know you, you were a consultant to President H.W. Bush. Explain how that worked. Well, he uh, it was a wonderful man, and he was very bright. One of the things that, and I, I started working for him in 1978 as a consultant when he was running against Reagan for the 1980 nomination, which he lost and then was named vice president, and then he kept me as a consultant, and I became part of the um, uh, special proceeding staff for the two Republican conventions that he was involved in. Um, but it, 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 with him, you left the first page of the speech blank because he wanted to write local humor and adapt to the audience. And, and he knew, he was smart enough to know that you can't contrive humor. And so he, he always said to me, just give me a blank page on the front of the speech and I'll make up some comments. And he was bright enough and quick enough to always come up with something quite humorous uh, uh, at the time. He was really a classy person, wasn't he? He was enormously uh, classy. He, he's my favorite client of all the people that I've, I've worked for. Very bright, uh, very, very glib. Uh, man with great style. Yeah. And you also worked for Lee Iacocca. Yeah, Lee Iacocca, uh, chairman of Chrysler Corporation at the time. Uh, I was brought on board uh, and I was his only writer. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I was writing about rubber polymers and cars and then <laughs> Ronald Reagan asked Lee Iacocca to head the Ellis Island Statue of Liberty Foundation to refurbish those monuments. And so here I was back writing like bicentennial speeches sure, again, and, sure. and it went very well. Uh, we had a very good partnership, Lee and I. And how do you compensate for, uh, what would be a weakness of, uh, of uh, without naming names particularly, uh, what would be the weakness of, uh, of a famous person? Well, some people can't pronounce certain words, <laughs> so you don't put them in the speech. Uh, some people are better at extemporaneous speaking. Uh, I'll give you a good example two people I didn't work for that have a different style and you have to work with it. Bill Clinton is a conversationalist. You write a speech for Bill Clinton, he may leave the text and then come back to it. Barack Obama is what I call a periodic speaker. He likes a set rhythm, he likes it all written out, and he is not going to deviate from that script. So you have two very different styles there that you have to learn how to write for if you're going to work for either one of them. I remember one speech that uh, where Clinton, where the teleprompter broke. Yeah. And he just kept on going and then finally picked up and uh, didn't miss a beat. That's right. He was, he was very good at that. Yeah. Well, uh, your work then led to the creation of the Freedom of Expression Foundation. Explain why that happened and what the foundation did. Well, I'd been working for Lee Iacocca about a year and I got a call from a senator who said that he was forming the Freedom of Expression Foundation to protect media rights. And he had the support of the Washington Post, the New York Times, the Los Angeles Times, the three major networks, AT&T, and he thought that I would be very good as the founder and president uh, putting that together. And so I left uh, Chrysler, took a pay cut, came back to Washington, D.C., and put the Freedom of Expression Foundation together. And we accomplished our goals. We got the content controls on broadcasters removed, and uh, they were given more parity with newspapers, and uh, at that point, I, I, I went to the board and I said, do we declare victory and close shop? <laughs> and they said, well, we like what you're doing. And I said, well, if we're, but we want you to continue in the research vein rather than the lobbyist vein. And I said, well, if I'm going to continue in the research vein, I want to bring it to a campus. And lo and behold, we put it out for bids and Long Beach State came and through. And we are blessed with having uh, the uh, Center for First Amendment Studies here at Long Beach State, which Craig brought to it and has served as director for how many years now? 25. We're having our 25th anniversary this year. Really? Yeah. Well, we'll definitely have to celebrate that. Well, 
Craig Smith, our guest here, believe it or not, has written 18 books. This is the 18th book, which is awesome for any of us, and particularly for those in the Academy. 18 books, and, and Craig, you just mentioned to me that books are like children. You don't have any children of your own, but well, yeah, these I, are your children. Right, I've been single, and so I haven't had mo much of a personal life, and, and, and so, you know, my books are like my children, and uh, I'm devoted to them. And I'm sure writing a, uh, you know, we're, we're men, not women, but, but writing a book must be the equivalent of giving birth to a child. The, the yeah, struggle, the labors. Yeah, and when you see it in print, finally, you have to read it again because it's, it's hard to believe that this is this gone. This is yours. From, yeah, and, it, and you've gone it's from Your all name the, is on it, so it must be yours. <laughs> yeah, and you've gone from all these double space type pages yeah. to something that looks nice in print. Yeah. Well, remarkable, and I know... Uh, friends have, have gone through this and, 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 and find it very, very powerful. So uh, if you want to learn about the craft of writing, and, uh, and good writing is uh, all too rare these days, I think you would agree, uh, take, take a look at Craig's latest book. Okay, we'll be back with the rest of our show after these messages. Trainees mixes California style with continental cuisine that includes fresh seafood from around the world. Since Phil is the chef, the menu has a wide variety of pastas, salads, soups, and appetizers that feature his unique personal touch. And the Italian-American signature dishes are simply beyond delicious. You never know who you're going to run into at Trainees, from the famous sports legends on the Wall of Fame to local celebrities having a drink at the bar. For the best fine dining experience, visit Phil Trainees. I want to improve my career opportunities. I want to earn a higher salary at my job. I'd like to finish what I started. The new Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Arts degree completion program at Cal State Long Beach will help you achieve your educational goals while keeping your life in balance. Contact our customer service center at 1-800-963-2250 for more information or visit us on the web. Let CSULB help you finish what you started. Take care of those who are closest to you, from our family to yours. McCarty's Jewelry, since 1932. I think we're very fortunate to have on our campus here at Long Beach State a faculty member of the caliber of Craig Smith, who's uh, made such an impact on so many students, and through his books, thousands and thousands more. Uh, Craig, uh, thank you for all you've done on our campus and, and also in Washington, D.C., and just uh, final comments you might want to make about anything. Well, I think I've, I've led a very lucky life. Um, you know, being a poor Navy brat that traveled around the country to go all the way from that to being a presidential speechwriter, to have the honor of, of being on the board of trustees of the California State University system for four years, to have had a, a, a loving career here at Cal State Long Beach. Uh, I just feel like the luckiest guy in the world, and I'm just so glad that this nation supports the kind of freedom that we have that allows for this kind of thing to happen. And freedom of speech is such an important liberty enshrined in the Constitution, yeah. and uh, although not always perfectly protected, uh, I think most Americans instinctively feel this is such an important freedom. Yeah, our Constitution's the first one to write down. Really? Freedom of expression, yeah. And uh, uh, if you have a, and we, I've been teaching this for so many years, but uh, dictators cannot tolerate a free press or an independent judiciary. So if you want to maintain your freedoms politically, protect freedom of speech and freedom of the press, and also support an independent judiciary. Absolutely. Uh, those were the dreams of Thomas Jefferson. He said, you can't have it. Democracy doesn't work unless the public's educated. The public isn't educated unless you have a free press and free speech. Yeah. Craig, thank you for joining us. It's good to be back. And thank you for being with us for the first show of 2014. We'll be back next week with another edition of Straight Talk. Good night, everyone. Straight Talk has been brought to you by the Port of Long Beach, the Press-Telegram, and Scan Health Plan. And remember, Straight Talk is viewable 24-7 
at straighttalktv.com.